Hello and welcome to another video on my channel The Fifth Vault. What you have just heard was a demo track for a new third-party module called Euclid Grid from Kia. This is a third-party module for the A-Modular system and I think it is a worthy addition to the system. It's so much fun to use. It is an Euclidean sequencer with four independent channels, plenty of inputs, outputs, and very well thought out performance controls. In this video I will show you how it works and I hope that you will see how incredibly powerful it is and how enjoyable it is to use. Please check in the description below where I will have a link to where you can purchase this module and I hope that you will find this module just as compelling and fun to use as I have over the last couple of weeks. So now let's look at the um, module as it is here in my WAC and the interface and inputs, outputs and controls. At first you can see this beautiful color display at the center here which displays our sequences. Now at this moment I have laid out the sequences um, uh, in a vertical configuration uh, so that they stretch horizontally but you will see in a minute that you can create all kinds of different shapes and patterns for these sequences so it doesn't have to look like that every single time. I also have to say that I have been a beta tester for this module so my faceplate looks uh, slightly different from what, it, from what it will look like once it is for sale but I have put in, in a marker here uh, what it will look like uh, later on. In terms of inputs, you have an external clock input, a trigger to reset a, all the sequences, and then you have for each channel, for each of the four channels, a fill uh, input. So here it says mute on my, mod, on my faceplate, but it's actually fill. And what fill means, uh, you will notice when I explain the different um, controls later on. Then you have an output of the bus clock and an output of the bus stop signals which you can put into the clock and reset inputs respectively. On the output side I have a output A, B, C and D for each of the four channels and at the top here you have alternative trigger outputs. So this means that each of those will fire a trigger whenever there is a step on one of these columns which is really cool because you can get alternative trigger outputs that are somehow um, relative, relative to the Euclidean sequences that are running in here but are not the same as those outputs. In terms of controls you have these two rows of buttons. You have a horizontal control for the individual um, sequence or for the active sequence a vertical control for the active sequence, um, uh, the number of steps per pattern and an offset of the pattern. On the bottom row you have a mute so that uh, clicking that mutes the active sequence, fill triggers uh, and controls the fill pattern. Clock is an internal clock and M is for memory where you can save the current state of the module and recall it later on. This is a endless encoder which is used in conjunction with each of these buttons and shift is uh, used to create uh, to control shift, uh, shift functions of each of these buttons as well. So let's go to the basics. First off um, we have the concept of an active sequence of which which means that each of these buttons will work only on one sequence at a time, except for the memory of course, and you can change the active sequence by just uh, um, uh, twisting the select knob here. So you can see the active sequence is now flashing, so now it's the green sequence and now it's the blue again. Also when you press each of these buttons the currently active sequence will flash so you know exactly of which sequence you are performing an action on. So most interesting for now I guess is the steps and offsets button 
which is how you control the uh, Euclidean rhythms. So before I go on with uh, demonstrating those, I just want to point your attention to an academic paper which has been circulating in the music scene for quite a while and which is the paper for, um, which I discovered by accident many, many years ago and was the first time I heard about Euclidean rhythms. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at that and then we come back to the module and go to each of these controls in detail of um, how you can use those to create these different rhythms. So the first time I heard about the Euclidean algorithm was when I came ac across this paper on a news group somewhere. And this paper explains the Euclidean algorithm and how it can be used to generate traditional musical rhythms. I put the link to this paper in the description below, but just going quickly over this, this paper explains where the concept is coming from, um, how you uh, play, how it's used to play speeds as evenly as possible over a length of a pattern, and then explains how the algorithm works. And really more interesting for me, or maybe for musicians anyway, is the uh, vast list of examples in this paper. So here you can see, for instance, different algorithm or different patterns like um, 1 over 4, uh, 4 over 12. And incidentally, the 4 over 12 pattern is a fandango clapping pattern um, in flamenco music. That's really interesting here. And as we go further down, we can see so many examples of really interesting rhythms. For instance, this one here, 3 over 7, is a Ruchenitsa rhythm used in Bulgarian folk dance, which is also used in Pink Floyd's Money. I didn't know that. So I can only recommend you download this paper and go through it and uh, just dial in some of these examples here, which is really easy to do with the Euclid grid, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. So here I have patched a bass drum into the channel A, so we're only looking at one channel to get our head around the different controls. And uh, at the moment you can hear nothing because the internal clock is stopped. So I press the clock button to start the internal clock and then you will hear the bass drum. So you can see it really only happens at the first beat here. And now we dial in more steps as for the Euclidean rhythms. So I press the step button and dial the select. Now I have two and you can see that they are evenly spaced. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now the offset button is used to rotate those uh, steps uh, or shift them one to the right. So I press the offset, it goes to the right and the other direction to the left. So you can see here how I can rotate them in each direction. Now you can see that currently this pattern length is 8 steps and using the X and Y together with shift I can, um, I can expand that. So for instance if I press uh, shift plus and Y at the same time and I turn the select knob I can actually get a 16 step pattern. And I still have the same number of steps, so now they are evenly spaced across a 16-step pattern. And just pressing Y, actually, I can rearrange this pattern on this display. So just pressing Y and using the select knob, I can now organize this pattern wherever I want it on the grid. 
And similarly, if I use the X, so click uh, uh, pressing Shift and the horizontal or X control at the same time, I can now reduce the size of the pattern. And by changing the physical size of the pattern, of course, it tries to evenly space out the beads. So for instance, you could use this to create fill patterns or variations immediately. So once you have a layout that is um, about this size, if I now press the, um, the horizontal button or the X button, I can move this across the area here horizontally as well. So what you can see is that each of these patterns doesn't have to stay in the same place. You can arrange it however you like. So for instance here, I can completely rearrange how these patterns look like. And for instance, I could totally rearrange them to look vastly different. So very, very uh, flexible control here. And obviously, if I go back to the blue pattern here, if I now change the steps, they will be laid out across this two-dimensional grid. And the offset changes that as well. Play around with the X and Y or the horizontal and vertical controls uh, because on the um, new faceplate you will have these arrows pointing to the left and right and up and down and the shift to control the size. So just these buttons control the uh, location and shift uh, controls the size. Now another cool thing is if I press shift in steps I can actually create a size that's uneven. So using X and Y, you usually get an even number of things, um, but I can also create, for instance, using shift and steps, I can take one step away. So now I have this one step is no longer part of the sequence. Same with this. So very, very interesting to do here. And I can also add steps, um, but they will always be stacked um, vertically. So using shift and steps, you can also quickly create different pattern lengths. Very similar to pressing uh, shift and Y actually, but while shift and Y always adds a whole row, shift and steps always adds only one more step. Now another cool feature is the mute. So if I have a currently active sequence and I press the mute button, it stops immediately. And we'll pick up where it stopped before. So very, very cool but you have to select an active sequence first. How do you know that a sequence is stopped? Well, as you can see, once it's running, you will have a kind of a cursor going across. And if you press the mute button, then it actually stops while all the other sequences are still running. Very cool that there's an internal clock. And if we press and hold, you can see the BPM. So currently the BPM is 120, and by holding it and turning the rotary button, you can change the clock, clock in 10 steps. Can I 
actually go quite high, up to 280. And if you hold shift and clock and turn, you can change it in single steps. And if you press clock once, it just stops. And pressing it again starts the internal clock again. If you are happy with a current status, or like the different layouts and so on, um, you can press Shift and M to save that status. So now it's saved. Now if I make a change, let's say I want to shift this around somewhere else, maybe make it bigger. And if I'm unhappy with that, I can just press M and get my old state back. So very, very quickly going back to a current, to a known state. Now the last function that I want to talk about is fill, and fill is really, really cool. So let's say I have a active uh, sequence here, that's my bass drum, and let's just reduce the steps a little bit. If I start the fill, I can actually get a additional pattern on top of the existing pattern. So you can hear here that fill adds more steps. And pressing uh, shift and steps, I can change the number of steps for this fill. Or shorter, just pressing fill and the select knob, I can add and reduce the steps. Pressing fill and offset, I can change the offset of my fill pattern. Now this in itself is a nice performance control because you can quickly dial in a fill for a pattern. But you can also use these inputs here. So if I, for instance, put in an LFO, so let's quickly put in a square wave LFO that goes into the input for the A fill. Then you can see every time the LFO is in the on position or adds a high voltage, it starts the fill and then it stops the fill again. Really, really, really cool. So let's look at, for instance, at uh, one of those um, alternative outputs. So if I put in, let's say, a uh, let's put in a clap. So here you can see I get a clap every time this um, row is triggered. And now if I go to, let's say, this sequence here and I change because this triggers at a slightly different time than this, I get this variation here. Really, really cool. Now let's add another variation, nice one. So for instance, if I go and I change the um, length of the green pattern and change the offset. So already you can see very, very different rhythms going on here. almost polyrhythms. So one other thing that I wanted to show you was that um, you have different modes of how the playhead moves through a sequence. So let's listen to this. 
So here you can see that the player head moves horizontally from left to right and then goes um, from top to bottom for each row. You can change that by pressing the shift button and the, turning the select at the same time. And the next play mode is reverse. So let's select the sequence first and change that sequence. So now it's going in reverse. The next mode is going ping pong. So let's do that. So now it will go from top to bottom and then go back up again. And the next mode is horizontal. So now you can see the playhead moves from top to bottom first and then goes for each column from left to right. And the last mode is random. So here it really picks a completely random step every single time and you don't know what's going, what's coming out of it. Now what's really cool is, is that these step modes are different are separate for each sequence. So let's uh, move to the next sequence and turn this on. So you can here have a bit of a closed hi-hat here. And I can change the uh, play mode here as well. So maybe make this one the vertical step and the other one again the normal horizontal step. So you can see that this is two different play modes per sequence. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, so here's a, a, a trick that I think this uh, Euclid grid is really, really good at. And this is, uh, if you count it, you have 64 steps. And 64 is actually a really cool large number of steps that you can have per beat. And this is really good for creating things that are very, very rare in occasion. So if we listen, for instance, to this beat, the moment, it's fairly quick. It's 120 BPM. So uh, as you can see here, we are looking at these two sequences. Now, if I wanted to have something that should only happen once every 64 steps, that's really easy to do. So for instance, I would go and select uh, this uh, sequence here and I move it to the top, to the very top, and then expand it all the way across the whole screen. Now I have sequence number B spanning 64 steps and although you can't see the other sequences anymore, you can still hear that they are still working. And in fact, if I choose the select button and I choose the sequences that you can see that it will actually show me those sequences, even though the sequence B is so large. So what's behind that? Let's start it. So it's currently on mute. And you can hear that I have created like a gong-like sound there, which uh, it's going through a delay and this has a really, lo really um, long delay tail. And it's perfect for these kinds of things that only happen once in a while or have a very long delay for pads, uh, these kinds of uh, gong things and so on. And obviously I could um, still put in steps to have it more often. Or completely overboard and then I can play around obviously with the delay time really cool to have something that is only happening once in a while and has a long delay tail for instance or a long envelope.
And of course, it's very simple to just take it all back again and move it across. And change it around like that. There you go. Thought I had just mentioned that it's a really, really nice little trick to create things that are very, very long. So this was the whole, everything I could show you uh, about the Euclid grid. And um, I hope that it was informative for you. Please check again in the description below where there's a link where you can buy this. I think it's an incredible module and it was so much fun to play around with it. Really heads off to Kia to make this incredible module. And yeah, I hope you will buy this and uh, will love this as much as I do. So to finish this off, I have created another track uh, which uses all of these channels and alt outputs and things like that. And I um, hope you will enjoy that as well. Thank you very much for watching.